Check Ultimate Guard .com and find premium quality products for your favorite trading card game. Check video description or visit Ultimate Guard for more. How's it going, Poké fans? Once again, welcome back to Pokémon TCG Center. In today's video, we'll be looking at another deck for the standard format. Um, in this video, I'm gonna play with Zora Break featuring Dust Mayor and a little bit of support with that top of Coco for the Fly Flip and even Drampa GX uh, with the Berserk. Um, so what's the strategy of the deck? Well, the strategy of the deck is, of course, to attack your opponent with the Mind Jack for 10, for 30, uh, 10 plus 30 for each of your opponent bench and Pokemon. So theoretically, the max damage that Zora can hit um, 10 plus 30 times 5, so 160, with the choice band 190 to <clears throat> one of your opponent GX or EX. Um, so probably a lot of you will say, well, you're not running Kukui, you can't even go for the one hit knockout against your opponent, a lot of ninthless. Well, that's correct, but for respond to that question, I have Dustmere with the um, Dark Inventation. So you can basically go with the Dark Inventation and once per turn you can simply look at your opponent hand and put basic Pokemon you find there on your opponent bench and put 3 damage counters on that Pokemon. So theoretically with the Dustmere in play um, we can reveal our opponent hand, bring that Vulpix on the bench or maybe Ralphs or something like that and then simply um, hit with the Mind Jack. Um, of course I didn't decide to play Kukui because it's very hard and difficult to find Kukui these days. Of course, you really don't want to spend your bench space benching down that type of level for Kukui, but sometimes for the, uh, for the knockout, that's a perfect play and perfect scenario, so that's the reason why I decided to play this Dust Mirror. <clears throat> it has two, uh, two advantage. The first one, that you can put your opponent Pokemon on the bench and three damage counters on it. The second one is the fact that you can just look at his hand. And the third one, Mind Jack can also hit for a lot of damage counters. 30 plus 30 more for each of your opponent benched Pokemon. With that being said, um, with Dustmere Mind Jack, we can actually hit for more than 190. In that case, we can go for like 180 and plus cho uh, plus choice band, we can go for 210. And with the Dustmere, we can take the knockout against 210 GX Pokemons. Unfortunately, um, even with something like um, Kukui, if I increase 20 more damage counters, I can go to 230. And even if I um, think about 230, uh, minus 20 because of the uh, Metagross resistance, it's still 210 and 3 damage counters from before, it will be a um, nightmare because we're going to be short to one hit knockout Dustmere. But speaking about Dustmere, we really don't need to worry, I guess, um, because, uh, not the Dustmere, but with the, the Metagross, um, because against Metagross, our opponent will still just take one prize card, we will take probably two prize cards for the knockout, and uh, we can also fly flip around the board, which can help dramatically to change cause of the game. Of course, Espeon EX can also be attacking this deck. Um, I don't know why I decided not to take a single Espeon, but also Espeon can be a good tech. Uh, speaking about GX Pokemons in this build, I'm running three top playlists for mainly for the Wonder Tag. Energy Drive can also be used, and one copy of Drampa GX just because that big wheel GX sounds like a good idea. Um, also with the first attack we can stall a little bit, uh, but also with the Berserk we can hit for 180 um, from nowhere if our opponent don't have a bench of too many bench Pokemons uh, in play, because multi-switch can definitely help uh, for that. Um, I also decided to run one Oranguru for Instruct, so I can run uh, draw cards until I have three, and that's pretty much it. 4-4-2 line of the Zorak, 2-1-2 um, line of the Dustmere, one Tapu Koko, three Lelas, and one Drampa, so 21 Pokemons in total. Speaking about trainer or item cards, I'm running two Field Blowers, because we really rely on the abilities. Um, two copies of Multi-Switch, so you can manipulate and switch energies from one benched Pokemon to the active one. Um, it's definitely good and it works perfect. Um, also two copies of Rare Candy for the Dusk to the Dust Mayor. Um, two Rescue Stretchers, one copy of Special Charge because this is a full um, Special Energy deck. Um, then I'm running, of course, four copies of Ultra Balls and two Altar of the Moon ex uh, instead of the uh, Float Stones. Somehow I feel that Altar of the Moon is gonna be a little bit better than the Float Stone. 
um, just in my opinion. Um, supporter line pretty much standard, 4-4 four, four draw uh, supporters, speaking about N and Sycamore. In addition to that, of course, I'm running one Bridget for that turn one explosive setup with our Tapu Lele, two Guzmans, two copies of Skyla for any trainer search, of course, three copies of Choice Bands and four copies of Double Chorus and four copies of the Rainbow Energies. As I mentioned it at the beginning of the video, uh, if you don't feel comfortable running this deck without Aspion, of course, you can definitely take Aspion because Aspion can then help in some situations against certain decks like for example metagross gx because it's very difficult to one hit knock out that metagross gx card especially if they attempt to use max potion we're definitely gonna have a hard time um so just in case if you're searching for the space for the aspen you can always remove one of the choice bands and then just um take one of the aspen cards inside of this build so if you're looking for any of these cards make sure to check ccgcastle.com with ccg center five code you can also get five percent discount on your first purchase um everything you need to know uh, can be found in my video description so yeah let's do some game tests so you can actually see how this deck works in action so see you in the game Okay, so in today's video, I'm playing with a Zorark deck featuring Dusknear. Um, one very interesting card, to be honest. I kind of like it, and it's definitely um, powerful because it allows you to reveal your opponent's hand. And if you can find Pokemon in his hand, you can put that Pokemon down to his bench and basically place three damage counters on that Pokemon. So, theoretically, it increases the amount of the damage counters um, for the attack with your um, Mind Jack. So far, so good. I cannot complain to my hand. I do have Tapu Koko um, with the Fly Flip. I also have my Azurua on the bench, plus there is also Daskul, so this is pretty powerful opening hand. And one Ultra Ball for my opponent, already discarding two Fighting Energies. Something tells me that, that there might be a Carbink on the other side. Carbink Break featuring something. I might be wrong, but I'm definitely gonna find out. Oh, Rogue Roof, alright. There we go, so it looks like in this matchup I'm gonna be um, weak onto the Fighting Pokemons. Unfortunately, Rockroof is weak on the grass, um, which means that I'm not going to be able to go for the one-hit knockout or for the weakness with my uh, Mind Jack Duskmere, for example. So, second Ultra Ball for my opponent might be for something like Shaman, might be for Orangru, so he can instruct for one who knows what type of the draw support he run in his deck. But so far, I see plenty of resources discarded. Um, three energies in total. Without carbing break, he cannot recover those energies if he don't play Super Road. So those energies might stack forever in a discard pile. That's for sure. Um, to be honest, I have almost perfect start here. Probably the perfect start would be energy attachment, Orangru, and something like a choice bet in addition to all of the cards in my hand, and then probably Sycamore for 7. Speaking about carbing, there it is. There is the first carbing for my opponent in play. And I'm looking forward to play my Sycamore for 7. So, can I get rare candy? Yes, I can, but problem with that rare candy is the fact I don't have my Dusk Mirror in my hand. At least, I can fly flip around the board and spread two damage counters to all of my opponent Pokemons and wait to see what he is capable to do. Alright. Um, two Zoruas on the bench. Um, there is also one Rainbow Energy. Oh, Guzma will be played to my Zorua and then he can retreat and pass the turn, so that's it. Um, another Muscle Band as a top deck. I don't see reason why I wouldn't attach my Rainbow of Energy and play Sycamore for 7, in hope to find at least... oh, just another Dusk Cool. 
Okay, let's put him on the bench. And I can't attack with my mind jack, but what I can do here is I can retreat for free to my Tapu Koko and fly flip once again around the board. Um, next turn I can have that Azorak break in play. Plus also double horse energy attached somewhere. Ooh, okay, bloodthirsty eyes. Will my opponent decide to use bloodthirsty eyes? Yes, he will. And there is Sycamore for 7, so one strong energy can get power jam, one hit knockout. I hope that's not gonna happen. Well, there is a carving break, however, he can hit for um, Diamond Gift and deal 4 damage counters. Somehow I'm thinking about this deck does 50 damage for each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Okay, so I can go for the one hit nugget with his GX against that Lycanroc and I'm probably thinking about doing that. Because right now that Lycanroc is a huge threat. Um, with the Goose Mind Mind Jack I'm not gonna have enough. So... Let's go with the Guzma. I guess it's pretty much the same which Pokemon will be promoted in the front. Um, full play. 140. Well, yeah, it, it looks like I'm short for like 10. So, yeah, I'm gonna use his GX attack for 230. <clears throat> and grab first two prize cards in the game, so there is a Rainbow Energy and another Double Course Energy. But still no sign of the Dusk Mirror. Um, Dusk Mirror would be perfect here, because with the Dusk Mirror I can simply look at my opponent hand and see what he have in his hand before I actually decide to play support a card or attack. That can be a huge advantage, so one Scorched Earth for my opponent. And another Lycanroc. At least I slowed a little bit my opponent. The problem with the Lycanroc is the fact that he can just close slash for one hit knockout. And that's something that actually considered me a lot. Another Diamond Gift for another 40 damage counters. And a couple energy attached. So there is a multi switch, which is a nice card. I'm thinking about playing a M. So what can I find here? Another Zorark, but that would be pretty much it. Um, okay, because probably I'm going to be knock it out next turn. I'm just going to go with the Mind Jack and with the fresh Zorark, I will hit my opponent with the Mind Jack for the one hit knockout. So better go for the 100 than maybe take the knockout from that carbing. Okay, so right now I actually need to find a way somehow to deal with this Lycanroc. Because he is a very powerful beast and he can hit for like 110 and one hit knockout pretty much easily one of my Pokemons in play. Ah, okay, this is the Lycanroc GX with the Crunch. Alright, alright. So one Scorchy Dirt has been played for my opponent. Hmm. That's interesting. There's not too many... Okay, so he decided to play Rescue Stretcher. It might be for Octillery if I'm not wrong, but it looks like it's gonna be... Oh, to reshuffle a couple Pokemons back into his deck. Okay, I desperately need that... <coughs> okay, sorry for that. i desperately looking for that Dusk Mirror because I need that damage output on my opponent bench. As many Pokemons as he can have, that many damage counters I can do. Times 30, of course. Um, okay, at least I can two-hit knockout his um, Lycanroc. So he decided to be... Um, he decided to hit me hard here for like 500 damage counters with that GX attack. Um, and I just top deck another N. So I'm thinking about playing that N, of course. What we can find here... Um, there's a Drampa. Of course, I'm not gonna waste that. I'm not gonna play that Drampa yet. I'm just gonna go with my Rescue Stretcher so I can reshuffle. Or I don't even need to reshuffle. I can just grab that Zora and put him into my hand. Of course, I can mind jack my opponent for like a hundred. 
which sounds like a good idea. Uh, mind Jack for 100. Next turn I can knock out his Lycan Rock with my full play for 110 and then goes down to one price. All I really need after that is is to power up my, uh, my Drampa and that's pretty much it. So with the Drampa then I can simply finish the game knocking out his Oh, okay, Suda Buddha will change things a little bit, but not dramatically. Um, there's a Wally for Octillery, of course. Oh, no sign of it. Okay. Still, I need to take three, but after the next turn, one prize. And my opponent will need to take um, four more prize cards, but he is definitely in much better position than I am right now. Um, there's no question about that. So he decided actually to retreat and apply some pressure with the crunch, of course, for the knockout. That's 140. Ooh. Huh. I wish I can right now hit for 200, but unfortunately I can't because I already used my GX attack. Um, what I can do, however, is Ultra Ball play. And I need to grab myself that top of Layla. For fresh hand of seven so i need to find that sycamore there is no question about that um that i need that sycamore play okay i mean i can go for the guzma i think right now guzma is just waste of time I could go with the Guzma probably down to Sudabuda because he had to retreat cost. And then Tapu Koko fly flip. Oh, actually that would be perfect scenario. But I didn't do that. Okay. Um, hmm. There's the multi-switch available in my hand. So I can basically deal some damage counters. Well, next energy can go with the... A silver rock for like 160 down to my top of Layla, and then I might be in a position to lose the game. So, to be honest, I didn't see a single choice band, and he also have only two cards available in, in his hand. Um, but yeah, Layla is the only one who can survive, not being knocked out. So let's try to do that. Let's basically try to do that. I can still attach my Rainbow of Energy somewhere and I'm definitely gonna go with the... Duskull? Yeah, I don't have that rare candy, but I do have Skyla in my hand. Um, energy Drive for like 80. If I can survive this turn with my Tapu Lele, um, then I can next turn just knock him out with my Zorark. If not, I'm still gonna end my opponent down to two, but he is in a much better position because he can even knock me out with his another Lycanroc. Oh, 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 okay, didn't expect to see a third one, but that actually happened. All right, fair enough, a Cell Rock for 180 damage counters which means if I have another multi switch and I think I have oh yeah but I don't have double course energy anywhere on the board I was speaking about multi switch I just top decks one 120 is a perfect scenario um yeah I think I definitely need to end my opponent and I'm gonna need that one bench space. So let's do something like this. Um, how many rainbows did I play? Okay, so definitely one multi switch to my Tapu Coco, and then one copy of the N. So I'm, I can end my opponent down to two cards. I can knock him out with my Zorark break. Ow, oh, two Dusk Mayors. That's so unfair. Okay. Still, I think I can win, mainly because um, I don't have enough for the mind jack, but I do have enough for the 120, which I'm definitely going to do. So, a cell rock for 150, actually, because I also have that choice band attached. And the good thing for me is the fact... Oh, there's a rare candy on Bridget. 
Okay, so that will change the game dramatically because I can finally bring that very candy dust mirror in play and see what my opponent have in his hand. I didn't see a single double course energy so far, so that might give me the opportunity basically to win the game. He decided to promote Tapu Lele in the front. And he puts two more Pokemons on the bench for the victory. And I guess I'm gonna put that Dustler in play just for the fun. Um, to see, yeah, I can't even look in the, at his hand because his hand was a fool. And he decided to concede. Okay, so that's pretty much GG. Even I was not able to go for the one hit knockout against that Tapu Lele. He decided to concede the game into my favor. And that's the GG. So yeah, my friends, that was pretty much a, a Zorark break Dusk Mirror deck that I built for the standard format, just for the fun. I don't think this is gonna be a top competitive deck, but it's definitely a very attractive deck um, that can cause a lot of headache to your opponent, especially if they um, need the setup and if they need that bench space. Because um, you can just hit with the Mind Jack for so many damage counters. Um, theoretically, if your opponent have five Pokemons on the bench, Mind Jack can go for 160, and with the Choice Band, it can go up to 190. Um, basically, this deck is made to go for the two hit knockout against everything, or maybe one hit knockout if you have that Dust Mirror, and if you, if you can just use that Darkin uh, Vitation and put one of your opponent Pokemons and three damage counters down to the bench. But overall, I kind of like it. So I hope you also enjoy watching this video. So make sure to check other videos and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Um, so stay tuned for um, more. Till the next time, have a nice day and uh, goodbye.